for almost a century, the great steel artery between London and Glasgow echoed to the sound of steam. From Stania Pacifics battling the gradients to hard-worked freight engines grinding north, steam defined the West Coast Main Line. And when steam finally bowed out, the diesels took over, growling, smoking and shaking the rails for another 25 years. But by the late 1960s, Britain needed something new, something faster, cleaner, something worthy of a modern era. And so, in February 1970, authority was finally granted. The West Coast Main Line would be electrified from Weaver Junction to Glasgow Central at 25,000 volts. After decades of debate, the wires were going over the border. For 125 years, the railway's movements were controlled by muscle and instinct. Semaphore signals swinging in the wind, points hauled by hand, more than 270 line-side signal boxes, their occupants communicating by block bells, written notes and sheer skill. It was a railway powered not by electricity, but by people. Electrification would change everything. A massive re-signalling programme came first. Out went the semaphores. In came multiple aspect colour lights, modern, bright and precise. Instead of hundreds of small boxes, just five power signalling centres would control the entire route. Warrington, Preston, Carlisle, Motherwell and Glasgow. Information would travel instantly through multi-core cables. No more clanking rods and wires. This was the age of electric command. And on a 227-mile project site, stretching from the Cheshire Plain to the banks of the Clyde, the work began. The construction method was military in its organisation. A train to dig the holes, a train to mix and pour concrete, a train with cranes to lift the heavy steel masts into position. Over 21,000 mast foundations were dug, aligned and poured between Weaver Junction and Gretna alone. Cold winters in the borders, rain sweeping across Shap Fell, bitter winds at Beattock Summit. But through it all, the work continued, mile after mile, season after season. At Crew Works, once home to the legendary designs of Ramsbottom, Webb, Stania and Riddles, a new generation of locomotives was taking shape. The Class 87s. 30 brand new electric locomotives, each packing up to 5,000 horsepower. Sleek, powerful and built for the toughest challenges on Britain's railway. Shap, Beattock, Carstairs and the long dash north to Glasgow. Inside the workshops, bogies, suspension systems, traction motors, brake gear, cab controls and electrical equipment came together with incredible precision. These were machines built for endurance, built for speed, built for the future. But electrification required more than locomotives and masts. Track layouts at Warrington, Wigan, Preston, Lancaster, Penrith, Carlisle and Motherwell had to be redesigned, curves realigned, junctions modernised, speeds raised. To run a railway at over 100 miles per hour, you don't just hang up wires, you rebuild the landscape. Power for the line came from a mix of conventional and nuclear power stations. It was transformed into 25 kilovolts AC and fed along the route through massive feeder stations placed roughly every 30 miles. From there, sectioning cabins delivered power to the overhead wires, creating the invisible lifeline that would carry trains safely from England into Scotland. By late 1973, the railway was ready. Section by section, crews energised the line. At 25,000 volts, every switch and contact had to be perfect. Every instruction had to be precise. There are no shortcuts when you're bringing a railway to life. And then came the moment of truth. The test trains. Heavy loads, steep gradients, unforgiving weather. Shap and Beat Tock were the proving grounds. Could the new Class 87s maintain speed without assistance? Could they haul tonnage equal to the mightiest diesels? They could, and they did. By 1974, the electrification of the 400-mile route from Glasgow to London was complete. 
Journey times fell dramatically. Reliability soared. The line became one of the fastest and busiest railways in the UK. And communities from Merseyside to Lanarkshire found themselves connected more closely than ever before. Old ways, beloved and respected, gave way to new technology. The sound of steam and diesel was replaced by the hum of electricity. But the spirit of the railway remained the same, linking people, industry and nations. The wires crossed the border and the West Coast Main Line entered a new era. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this journey through history, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me make even more railway stories just like this one. Until next time, safe travels.